Week 13, Problem 8. An electron is in the ground state of an infinite square well. The energy of the ground state is energy 1, which is 1.2 electron volts. What wavelength of electromagnetic radiation would be needed to excite the electron to the n equals 7 state? All right, so this is a particle in the box problem. The idea here is we have a box, like so. First state would be like this. Second state would be like this. Third state would be, I think, like that. It's basically the number of nodes, the nodes, the parts that don't move, uh, minus one. So um, there would be, I guess, eight nodes for the seventh state. Um, but before you think too deeply about it, let's just go to the equation. Particle in a box. Particle in a box. Ooh, right here. Nice. So there's a whole bunch of data. This is actually probably reasonably important to know, um, but not for this class. I would recommend just memorizing the equation and moving on. Right here, energy levels. This is the guy we want. So I'm going to say that E for the nth level equals, what is it, n squared h squared n h pi, n squared h bar squared, I think there's a pi squared, over 2 ml squared, over 2 ml squared, and this was L. Well, a little bit bigger than that, there we go, that's L. And generally, whenever you see 2m in the uh, denominator like that, that means that someone took basically the kinetic energy equation, one half mv squared, and replaced it with momentum. Um, I did that in a previous video. That's where you generally find that 2m in the bottom. All right, so let's look at what they're trying to tell us here. So they're saying that for E1, which is 1 times h bar squared, pi squared over 2ml squared equals 1.2, okay? So then E7 equals n squared h bar squared pi squared over 2ml squared. Well, we already know from the first part that this is 1.2. We know that n, in this case, is going to be 7. So this is going to be 7 squared times 1.2. So 49 times 1.2 mm, times 1.2. We have 58.8. Um, um, equals 58.8 electron volts. 58.8 electron volts. Okay. So let's actually read the question. I know I read it like three times, but I never actually pay attention. So it starts in a ground state. Energy in the ground state is that. What wavelength of electromagnet would be needed to excite? Okay, to the n equal set. So we need to. So we start at 1.2 and we go to 58.8. So I multiplied by 49. I should have actually multiply by 48, i.e. 7 squared minus 1. So we just want to find out how much energy we have to add. So if I do this by 48, nope, that's not what I wanted. So I could, Or I could just do uh, 49 times 1.2 minus 1 times 1.2, which is 57.6. So delta energy equals 57.6 electron volt. I probably could have done that in my head. I chose not to, which is hc over lambda. Um, hmm, can I just turn that to make it straight? <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm good with that. Hmm, interesting. So, um, in HC over lambda is the same as uh, HF. We should, you know, we should already know that. So this equal, so therefore, lambda, so basically the idea here is you take a inferior particle, this one right here, with energy one, and you take a photon, it goes in, it contributes its energy, 
and now you're at this superior particle with an energy level of 7. Oh, there's probably some Dragon Ball Z over 9,000 joke in there. Yeah, I'll think of it later. All right. So solving this guy, we have equals 1, 2, 4, 0 electron volts nanometers over 57.6 electron volts. Cancel, cancel. 1, 2, 4, 0. 1, 2, 4, 4 0 divided by 57.6, and we get 21.5. nanometers. Quite a energetic little photon. That is pretty. I think that is pretty energetic. Hmm. Alright, wait a sec. Check again. 21.5. 1240. Yep. 20. Hmm. 21.5. Okay. So the wavelength that we're going to need, the wavelength of the photon that's going to have to excite this guy from the first state to the seventh state is going to be 21.5 nanometers. What is the width, width of the square well? All right, so now we go back and do some calculations here. So the width is this L squared. So I'm going to take this portion right here, this data, and solve it. So... L squared equals, okay, it's going to be H bar squared, actually, H bar pi squared, okay, hmm, divided by 2 times mass times 1.2 electron volts okay so now I need to find out what H bar is so that's uh, Planck's constant Planck's constant H bar I'm gonna do electron volts so I'm going to do 6.58 6.58 times 10 to the negative 34th. That's pretty small. Squared times pi squared. It's um, H bar is just Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, so I could have simplified that. I'm not going to. Divided by 2. Now I need the mass of an electron. Uh, I should know this one. I think it's 5.0. 0, 0.2 electron volts, mega, volt, mega electron volts. All right, mass of an electron. So 0 0.51, 0 0.511, 0 0.511 times 10 to the sixth electron volts per C squared, I think it's per C squared. Point five one one times 10 to the 6th uh, mega electron volts per C squared, okay? Times 1.2 electron volts. Now in the grand scheme of things, it probably would have been easier just to do this using um, 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 joules but I guess I wanted to be awesome and show off. Yeah, I was hoping, I was actually hoping it was gonna be easier than it was. All right, 6.58, 6.58, and that's electron volts second. So this will be electron volts squared, seconds squared. So this, this, this cancels, the meters per seconds are gonna cancel on that, and we'll be left with meters. Okay, I'm not even going to try to simplify this guy because that's just going to be asking for trouble. So I'm going to do quantity 6.58 times 10 to the negative 34th times pi squared. 6.58 times 10 to the negative 4th times pi squared. Squared.
do it like this okay maybe we'll see if that works divided by two times 0 0.511 two times 0 0.511 times 10 to the sixth times 1.2 divided by 1.2 uh, 2.99 times 10 to the eighth quantity squared Did I put in another parenthesis maybe I don't know probably should get rid of this guy though so I got one, two, three. I'll throw in another one, just for good measure. All right, let's see what Wolfram says I did. All right, so I got 6.58 times 10 to the negative 34th. 6.58 times 10 to the negative 34th times pi, quantity squared. Check. 2.511, 10 to the 6th, 10 to the 6th. And we have 1.2, and we have divided by c squared. Okay, and we get, whoa! Let's square root the whole thing. Square root of. It's still going to give us something ridiculous small. So this gives us 5.58 times 10 to the negative 28th. 5.58 times 10 to the negative 28th meters. Which is probably too small. Is that too small? Hmm, that's a pretty small box. What is the width of the well? All right, let's go back and check this guy real quick. So we did, so we want to find L. So we have H bar, okay. Open, link a new tab, particle in the box. Hold down. So here's our equation. So L, pretty sure L is the width of the box. Mm, I'll say yes. Yeah, probably. It looks like a limit. So, n squared, h bar squared, pi squared, 2 ml. All right. So we're using n equals 1. So 1 squared, that's fine. So we have h bar times pi, quantity squared, okay, divided by 1.2, divided by 2, divided by mass, which is 0.51 times 10 to the negative 6. Ah, wait a second. Yeah, times speed of light squared. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Should I give in this? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to try this again, but from a different angle, just to make sure. So h bar, Planck's constant. I'm going to use 6.6 .6 times to the negative 34th. So come down here. We're going to have 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th. We're going to also multiply by pi. We're going to square the whole thing. We're going to divide by 2. We're going to multiply by mass of an electron. Electron. Which I should have memorized by now. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st. 1.2, but I'm going to have to convert that 1.2 electron volts into joules. And to do that, we're going to have to do 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Okay, I'm going to do 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative 34th. 6.6 .6 
times 10 to the negative 34th times pi quantity squared. And this should give us a super small number, like negative 70. 4.3 times 10 to the negative 66. 4.3 times 10 to the negative 66. And then we'll do 2 times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st times 1.2. 1 1.2 1 .2 seems pretty underpowered at this point. Times 1.6 times to the negative 19th times 10 to the negative 19th. We have 3.5 times 10 to the negative 45. So we have 3, did I say 3? Yeah, 3.5. 3.5 times 10 to the negative 49th. Okay. So let's see here. So we have 4.3 over 3.5. Is that everything? Did I miss anything? No? 1.2 electron volts, mass? Yeah, it's probably close enough. All right, 66 and, so that's like 17 times 10 to the negative 17th equals L squared. Okay. So let's do 4.3. 4.3 times... Oh, divided by 3.5, and we're going to multiply by 10 to the, let's see, 16, 50, 1, yeah, I'll say negative 17. No! Ah. Negative 17, okay. And then we'll square root the whole thing. And we get, yeah, it's 3.5 times, okay, that seems more reasonable. That seems much more reasonable. All right. So then, L equals 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. 3.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. All right. I don't know what I did wrong with the top one. This is the answer I'm going to go with. And they want it in nanometers? Yes. 3.5. Okay. So, backing up a little bit. This is the equation we want to use. They gave us that energy level was 1.2 electron volts. So that's our energy. Um, we rearrange it to find L squared. We then just start plugging things in. Um, I tried to use electron volts as the energy, and I kind of went off the deep end. So I got something that was ridiculous small, like negative 28th small. So what you should do is use um, SI units, kilograms, that such, and such. And I got uh, 3.5 times 10 to the negative 9th um, nanometers, which seems about right at least more right than something to the negative 20th. So that is how you do this problem. One of the key ideas here is as you go up energy levels, you have this n squared where n is the energy level. So I wouldn't spend too much time trying to understand this. You know, It is an important concept in life, but I don't think it's particularly important for this class. So what I would go for is see this equation, memorize that equation. And after that, yeah, just use it for the test, do well enough, and then spend your time that you do spend studying on the other things. I'd probably review your previous tests, that sort of thing, before you spend too much time learning this. So that's all I have for problem eight. I will see you on problem nine.